Hey, it's Andrew Huang. It's a huge day. Today we are looking at the OPZ from Teenage Engineering. They just sent this to me. Everyone who's ever watched my channel knows how much I love the OP1. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Look how tiny it is. Look how much tinier it even is than this, which was already so tiny. Like, come on. I've only had it for one day, so I haven't mastered it, but I've made a whole bunch of beats on it. Um, so I've gotten to know what the workflow is like and a lot of the main differences between the OPZ and the OP1, which I'll talk about later in the video. Right now I figured the best way to just show you what it's like and how it works is to just make a new track on it. So let's do that. This little thing that sticks out here is the power and the volume. You just turn it to turn it on and to turn it up. It makes that nice little chime. On the top side here, there are these four buttons that are sort of like your global menu kind of stuff. P for project, two little level meters for your mixer, the metronome for time-based things, and then this screen button, which we'll get to later. So let's load up a project. I'm gonna hold down P and press one of these 10 numbered black keys. Let's go with the first one. So that's a little beat I made earlier in project number one. If I hold P, all these buttons that are lit up here show which patterns I have. So here's another one. Another one. So this button here that looks like an I or a sideways H, that is the track button and you will use that all the time. All the other buttons on the same row as it represent different tracks or different pages or different functions. So uh, the first four are drums, you got kick, snare, hi-hats, and other percussion. You can swap all those out for whatever you want, but essentially they're one-shot samples. And then there are four synth tracks. You've got a bass, a melody, arpeggio, and chord. And each of those instruments has different synth engines that are better suited to those tasks. So for instance, looking at this chord one, if I press track, these numbers light up and I can choose different synth engines. And then these represent the uh, different presets. So you choose a plugin, choose a preset. Okay, we're almost gonna make a track, I promise. There's just one more thing I wanna show you about these audio tracks. If you press the shift key, you cycle through four pages of what the knobs do. And you know what page you're on based on the color of the lights. Okay, now let me show you how building a track works. I'm gonna put down the drums first so I have something to play along with. So with the kick drum, Let's go with that one. So when I'm on the kick track, pressing any of these buttons will just put a trigger down. So I'm just pressing them at random. But there's another way to enter steps. I can record them live. So if I press record and play, as soon as I press any of these keys that are in this piano layout, it'll start recording. And if I press and hold track, I can quantize that by turning the yellow knob up when it blinks, it's at maximum quantization, snapping everything to 16th notes, but I think I'm gonna leave it loose for this track. Let's go to our snare. I like these two together. And you do have up to two sample polyphony on these drum tracks. Let's get a hi-hat in place. One thing you could do if you don't want to robotically or automatically quantize your performance, you can hold down a step and then press these plus and minus keys to nudge them around. And uh, depending on how the lights are blinking on either side, you can see how close or far they are from being perfectly on beat. You can also adjust the velocity per step using this little button. When you're playing, this is used for pitch bends. But when you're sequencing, it can be used for the velocity of each step. So if I hold this step, press it down a bit, I'll do that for each of the offbeat ones. Now I think I went too far there, and also I want them to be even. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just get one that I like, and I'm gonna copy that one. And to copy, all I have to do is hold it down, it's copied, and now when I put 
a step in by pressing, it'll be that step that I copied. I'm finding the synth sounds a little bit dry, so let's go to the LFO page. This is the purple page. I have used the LFO to modulate the second synth parameter, and I've also sent this to a little bit of reverb, so I'm liking this sound more. It's a little more lively. Uh, let's add a bass line. So that's your basic track building workflow. Let me switch over now and talk about the effects because this is something, one of many things actually, that they've done with the OPZ to make it a real performance instrument. So I access the performance page by pressing track and this little, I don't know what that character is doing. And now all the piano keys are different effects that you can apply live. And the cool thing about this is it's not like audio effects where you're just processing the audio, but because the OPZ has access to every little bit of data of what you've done in the sequencing, it's actually changing things at the sequence level. So not only does that lead to some interesting results when you're performing with it and you can do these fun little fills and unpredictable things, uh, if you just mash a whole bunch of effects, I, I don't know how many you can do at once, but I haven't found a limit yet, you can create an entirely new sounding thing out of what you've already put down. It's just super fun to jam with, but if you got to know how every button behaved, you could be really intentional with the kinds of things you wanted to pull off. And look at all the amazing effects you get. Uh, snake, left triangle, Harry Potter, number two. Just a few more cool things before we get to the OP1 comparison. Uh, and this is the kind of more gnarly stuff and it all kind of fits together. I'm just gonna try and go through it. You can sequence all these performance effects. Now another cool thing that you can do is change the number of steps in a track. Say, uh, I only want seven steps. Now it's gonna cycle through just these seven steps and those performance effects, but the rest of our track is still playing in normal time, meaning these effects are now gonna land on different beats. Hope that's given you an idea of how powerful the sequencing is on the OPZ. Why don't we talk now about the differences between the OPZ and the OP1. Now this isn't gonna be super comprehensive because again, first day with this thing, but I've gotten a feel for it and I think I can tell you about the main differences between the two, what I like better about each one. I think one of the first things that most people notice about the OPZ is that it doesn't have a screen. The screen on the OP1 gives you a lot of really great visual feedback, but I don't miss it as much as I thought I would. What they've done with the lights on the OPZ, the different colored lights, the lights that are in almost all of the buttons, they really give you a lot of good feedback about what's going on. Obviously though, it means you don't get the cow. The cow is my favorite effect in the OP1 and the OPZ not only doesn't have the cow, it just has fewer effects overall. The OP1 gave you three different kinds of delays. You got the nitro filter, the cool phone glitch thing, the punch one that, uh, I mean, I don't really use that one much. And then the spring reverb. On the OPZ, you get two effect sends and they're global. So you have to pick two for your project. And you get a choice of a rhythmic delay, a spring reverb, a bit crusher, and a distortion. Now, on the other hand, the OPZ has all those performance effects we were looking at. It's very much like the pocket operators where you can punch those in. 
Here you can sequence them. You can have them individually on tracks and then within that individually on different steps. That's one of my favorite features about the OPZ and it's not on the OP1 at all. That kind of intricate and playful and sometimes unpredictable sequencing is what makes the OPZ so powerful. The OP1 gave you these six different sequencers, but a couple of them were just kind of more fun and not really that musically useful, like the sketch one. Like, how am I gonna just no. And you had to choose one, use it, record it, and then you had to switch to whichever one you wanted to use on your next track and record that separately. On the OPZ, all of the sequencing you want to do can all happen at any time. The OPZ also has more tracks. It's got the four percussion tracks and the four synth tracks, but it works a bit differently from the OP1. The OP1 has this tape player with four tracks that you could record anything you want onto from the synth or the drum tracks. And speaking of the tape machine, that's a slightly different workflow too. Like you're recording to these tapes and then you can cut and paste different chunks. Whereas on the OPZ, you're making different banks of patterns and then you can chain the different patterns together into a song. So that's a little bit simpler, a little less cumbersome, but also you can't use the OPZ as just a straight up recorder. Sometimes in a pinch, if I've had the OP1 in my backpack, but I didn't bring my audio recorder with me, I could just plug stuff in to the line in port and record it. The OPZ has no such line in port. Check this out though, if you do want that screen action and you're on iOS, it's iOS only, there's the OPZ app that you can connect to, press this button, and now that screen button on top here comes into play and you can use these guys together. So here's all your visual feedback on your different tracks, performance controls, tells you what they are. And here are a couple completely ridiculous things that they've built into the OPZ. Um, it can control a lighting rig or Unity motion graphics. I haven't dug into this at all, but there's all these different lighting effects that you can do. I believe you have control over the color as well. And you can perfectly sequence that in time with your music because it uses the same step sequencer as the instruments. This all happens through DMX, which is a very common stage lighting standard, as well as being the world's most abrasive rapper. Let's go give it to you. Let's check out this Unity stuff. So here's one of the examples that it comes with. You can see as I press different effect buttons, it changes the animation. So if you know your Unity, you can get in here and connect different elements to the OPZ. And again, trigger things along with the music coming from the OPZ, all perfectly in time. Super cool for live shows. So those are the main things I can tell you so far. They're both super deep devices, so there's a lot more to both of them, but um, I'm sure you'll see more of the OPZ on my channel in the coming weeks and months. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And also any Canadians watching, please don't give me a hard time about saying Z instead of Z. I love Canada, but Z makes no sense. Z rhymes with the other letters that it's supposed to rhyme with. And it's also the last one. You can't just end on Z. You know how unsatisfying it is to recite the alphabet in Canada? Like, oh my God.